Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we are starting a little mini series with our Cushman GT1. Let's get started. That is right, we are starting. I'm trying to figure out how to do this a little bit on the fly uh, because of a couple of reasons. First and most important, the team over at uh, Parts Sam went ahead and sent out to me this uh, eight gang uh, switch uh, control for the golf cart. It can be used for uh, marine use, RV, off-road, whatever the case may be, wherever you need a handful of dedicated circuits. But we also need to upgrade what's in here. So I'm gonna start off with kind of walking through the, the product itself, and then we're gonna dig into how we're going to use it. So the team over at PartsAmp reached out to me a while ago and wanted to get this set up and working and scheduling is finally lined up. I didn't get it done as soon as I wanted to just because some other things with some time constraints uh, delayed this project, but I'm excited to get on it. Um, I've actually been using uh, PartsAm stuff since before I was a YouTuber. And uh, most recently we did a video on installing a, a high mount brake light on the Ford pickup. So I guess uh, I've been cool before I knew it was cool to be cool. First of all, let's take a look at what's in the box. Foam, important. Instructions, also important. User guide, also important. But the good stuff here is right here. We have <clears throat> Heavy duty wiring going from your battery uh, to the unit. There's also a 80 amp resettable breaker, which is gonna be handy for tying into your main power. Next, we've got our eight channel uh, control panel here for controlling whatever you choose to hook up to it. There is a uh, whole pack of icons you can put in these uh, switches, whether you're controlling things like uh, exhaust fans on a boat, off-road lighting, uh, radios, whatever, whatever you plan to use it for, they've got a sticker for it. We've got some control wire from the main unit down to the uh, switch box, various fuses, mounting hardware. Here's just a sample of those icons that can go on those switches, whether it's, you know, maybe locking hubs, horns, lights, reading lights, auxiliary batteries, heated seats, what else is in here, fog lights, refrigerator, Fans, PA system, auxiliary stuff, master power, underglow lighting, diff lock, whatever, air locker, tons of different options to configure. And powering everything is this big switch assembly. Let's take this cap off and see what it looks like inside. So in this sturdy metal case, we have a number of connections here for focus, there we go. For our fuses and our power out, our main ins, and a couple of leads here for the controller. Now these are all coded whether they're 30 amp, 10 amp, 5 amp, uh, 20 amp. So you can definitely choose whatever you need to use for your different uh, type of device you're hooking up to it, whether it's you know LED lights, whether it's your cooling fans, uh, CB radio, whip lights for your, your Ranger, whatever the case may be. Um, Plenty of different options to configure it. Now, how are we gonna use it with the Cushman? So with the Cushman, I use it uh, every year up at the Steam Threshers reunion to film our annual uh, DVD, now also streaming on YouTube. And to bring a personal vehicle, it needs to have headlights, taillights. Um, I've got that covered, but I've also got some other additions in there for my own use. Uh, pretty much, I fill up the bed with all of my camera stuff during the day. It is electric, so it charges, but it's super quiet. Um, but yeah, full of camera stuff. And years ago, when I first put this together, I had a very rudimentary switch panel up here built. They are uh, powered by a big master and then lighted switches for the different uses I have. This used to be to control a large camera crane that I had built, uh, remote controlled demonetization before drones. This does the, this now does the underglow lighting. This does the headlights. This does the uh, box light uh, that goes back here, shine down on the box at night. 
And of course, I've got some other uh, floodlights and strobes that go on the roof. And of course, you've got to have the radio. Well, that looks fine and dandy on the surface, um, but I built this back in 2007, I think. It started with just the Cushman uh, here itself, and then I added on uh, the roll cage with the help of my uncle. Actually, it is built sturdy enough so I can stand on it, and I used to have a eight foot uh, telescoping uh, camera boom, pan tilt, a whole uh, rig that I built from scratch, radio control, so I could have uh, you know my camera 14 feet in the air and get pictures of everybody. Now, I have a drone, so I don't need that. But I do still have a need for all the electrics on here, and let's just say that my wiring and skill has improved drastically since 2007. Let's take a look what I mean. Back in the day, I also had a drop-down TV screen so I could uh, view what I was filming and uh, had all my own custom wiring harnesses and circuits to get all the wiring stuff working. It actually used a um, door window from a car um, for the side-to-side -side pivot and then also one for up and down, all chain drive. But, you know, it got to be big and clunky. And I built a trailer, which had a 14-foot telescoping um, mast on it, which worked great. Um, it had trailer jacks on all four corners, so sturdy as a rock, and uh, powered by another battery. That same screen moved back there so I could see what I was filming. But things evolve, and now we have drones. Oh yeah, the last little bit of lights I had on here to show you, turn off the music. It's these guys. Tons of different combinations. As the show is visited by, I don't know, thousands upon thousands in the five digits uh, every year of spectators. And I need to be seen. And since I don't have a loud engine, you can't hear me. So you gotta be able to see me. Anyways, we'll flip this down. Hopefully the caulking is still retaining it. It must, because I resealed it. Yep. All right. And probably safely take this off now. No, who knows. My original goal, I wanted to take all of this down, rebuild it, uh, make it a little less of a traumatic head injury uh, on entry. I don't know that time is going to allow that, so I wanna go ahead and make sure I get uh, this video done for the, uh, for the switch control. And if we have time to rebuild this uh, headliner unit, I will. Uh, anyways. If you look underneath, you can see all the wonderful lighting and the wires. It, it's not that bad, except if you look up here really close, my uh, positive and negative lugs are simply drilled through a one by two sticker with all of the leads on them. So it's probably a good idea to upgrade that for safety because while everything in here is pretty well waterproof, I'm thinking running 12 volts of 700 amps and a car battery through wet wood with two uh, lugs, what grounding out would be a bad time. Now everything is fused, but let's just not tempt fate. So really my plan is all of this wiring is gonna come out and get redone. Uh, I've made some modifications over the years and added a high mount brake light out of the system. So I need to be able to control that independently of the tail lights or the headlights. Um, I also just want to clean everything up and get rid of some of these switches up here. I do have a nice little indicator for the overall charge of the Cushman, so that's nice. Um, but all these switches can go away, something a little more uh, weatherproof and uh, easier to use. So everyone knows what they are. The wife gets in here to drive it and has no clue what the switches do. So uh, that's what we're going to hope to fix. And we'll grab this little switch panel over here. It has a nice long set of leads to go back to the main control unit. And my end goal is if I keep this whole unit up here, I'd like to just be able to put this right up here and be done with it 
everything is easy to get to. I'd like to move the radio uh, center here as well and thin down this side of the uh, unit and this side of the unit because when you get in, if you're not expecting it, you will crack your head on here um, or your passenger will. Ask pretty much any passenger who's ever gotten in this for the first time and smack their head. So we're gonna rip out a lot of this wiring. Uh, much of it will stay just because I don't need to run new leads down to the headlights and taillights and everything. Those are good. Um, I've replaced those over the years just with better stuff and uh, we're good to go there. So, oh, I need to disconnect the 12 volts for this cart. Uh, it's running off 36 volts, but I've got a 12 volt uh, step down for all of the accessories. I used to carry just a standard uh, deep cycle battery in the back with a uh, solar charger on the roof. It just complicated things. And uh, I'm trying to go for simple. So I'm not sure adding a, <laughs> an eight port uh, or an eight circuit uh, control pad does that, but it does have a nice master on off switch. And that's gonna allow me to A, uh, make these things a little easier for everybody to use, like I said, and also is completely waterproof. So if I wanted to do something like move everything down here, I could. This is a glove box I built. Uh, originally, there was just a piece of metal uh, back here with the uh, voltmeter on it. But now I have a glove box for holding stuff something for your cold snacks there. So we're just gonna try and clean this up and make it a little more user-friendly. Now I think my biggest issue is gonna be planning where everything goes. I do have an option to put that control module uh, down here under the seat. I'll show you that in just a minute. Uh, I could have put it up here in the overhead. Uh, there's a plus and minus to each. Um, if I had the control module down here underneath the seat, I could get rid of most of these wires from being on the roof with the exception of the radio and a couple of my lighting things. Um, but I would have to rerun a lot of wires and move stuff around. And again, if I kept the uh, control module up here, this whole overhead may need to be a little larger still, but it would at least uh, mean I don't have to move all my wiring. So I'm kind of at a tipping point what I want to do there. So I don't know yet. But down in here looks like pretty much any standard electric golf cart. Uh, the only big addition I added, like I said, was that 36 volt to 12 volt stepper right there. Uh, last year I did replace the solenoid and the, I think the auto resetting breaker for this thing is still original hiding down there. I may replace that. We'll see on the golf cart side of things. But everything's dirty, it's dusty. Um, I could probably clean up a few of these connections. One of the batteries started on fire a long time ago. That was fun. So I think what I'm gonna do is get some paper out and draw down my circuits, figure out where everything is now and where I want things to end up. Um, I know up here on top, it would definitely be a little more uh, hidden away from the elements. And if I look if you look up where the radio is now, I would have probably enough room to mount that, uh, that control box or that main, main, uh, main fuse box and fuse block up here. But I've also got things like this for the uh, strobe lights to deal with and just general trying to make the most of the space that I have yet and trim this thing down. So I've got cables running uh, through here, down to the underneath. I've got some cables running around the side over here uh, from the battery up to the top here. I've got my bed light. I'm gonna have to think about this one here. Uh, <clears throat> but let me go ahead and draw things out and we'll come back. Alrighty, I think I figured out what I'm going to do. I'm gonna trim down both of these sides, get them in as narrow as possible, at least this one third side for the passenger so that I don't have anything uh, obstructing. What happens is someone comes in, 
they sit down and they catch their head right on the corner of this wood. And uh, then I get complaints. So I'm gonna trim this side down for sure. That's gonna move our radio to the middle. I'm gonna keep the main uh, fuse block up here as well, but I am going to run uh, the main self-resetting breaker down to the bottom. I don't need to be running four gauge wire all the way up here. Really, there's only a single 15 amp breaker in here now, but should I ever need to uh, change that, I'll have the option. But for right now, I have nothing that needs that four gauge wire. So uh, I'm gonna work on getting the existing wiring stripped out and labeled so we can kind of start fresh and get this, uh, this third moved out and cut out. And uh, we'll come back in just a minute. All right, well, it is a new day for me and I've been plugging away, taking apart more stuff in this uh, console. And I took out the radio. That's going to get hopefully moved here into the center section. And I'm kind of mocking up everything. I don't know if I'm going to redo this uh, faceplate or what we'll see at the end game. Uh, but if we walk around the back, Here's where I'm considering putting the uh, switch panel. There are a couple of different mounts, so it will end up getting flush mounted uh, against this piece when all said and done. Main control unit, I'm gonna set up here. And I've got all this giant chunk of wires to clean up. So let me go ahead and start wiring things up, or at least getting this control, uh, the, the switch block in place, and then we'll go from there. All right, we've gone through done just a very minimal wire to get this uh, control panel fired up. And let me quick show you what we've got going on. So for right now, I've simply got our 36 volt to 12 volt uh, step down connected up to our massive pile of batteries. And I ran up wiring through this wonderful rat's nest. You can barely see up to our uh, switch box and our original master cutoff. So what I ended up doing is keeping my master 12 volt switch here because unlike uh, the golf cart, which is 36 volts, I had to add in 12 volt uh, service for everything else here. And I wanted to have things like the radio still re retain the memory settings for the clock, radio stations and whatnot. But I also ran this so I can turn it on and off. We have our master switch on here. So if I turn off um, the parts amp controller here with our three lights on, Turn the master back on, everything goes. So that's what we've got set up currently. And then our master, we turn this off. All the 12 volt stuff is dead, uh, but like the car stereo still retains its settings. And I've gone and drawn out a very rudimentary map of where I'm going to uh, put each of the circuits and the buttons and wire those up. And all the fun part is finding the rest of these lights and hooking them back up where they go. You can see I did end up moving the location of the controller uh, from over there to up here. It had better fitment and more clearance uh, to run my wires through. So that's what I'm gonna work on doing is just going hooking up all of these different circuits. Once I disconnect my power again, uh, but really the wiring up was a pretty simple thing to do. For me, it was just figuring out where the wires went, and I did trace most of those out when I took things apart, but it just goes to show how you can use uh, one of these products that has a kind of a standard or intended use with a vehicle, and how you can make it fit with uh, your intended application, even, even if it's like this and doesn't have a standard um, ignition circuit like a, you know, a vehicle or a boat or a UTV or something. So plenty of ways to customize these things to uh, your exact needs. Let me go ahead and finish wiring up all of my other lights and uh, we'll come back with how it looks. Alrighty, I've been working away here and I've gotten this thing wired up for the most part. I don't have the radio cut in yet, but that's minor compared to everything else here. Uh, let's take a look. Go ahead and hit our master switch. I've yet to put the labels on these things properly, but if I hit one here, that is my underglow down below. You can see that. I've got, what else here is here? My box light. Got something else. Maybe that's a cigarette lighter. I've got to look at my diagram. 
something else, something. Oh, there's my strobes that go up on the top. Oh, uh, let's see, something else, something else, and headlights. And hopefully if I hit the brakes, huh. my high mount does not work, but I'm gonna blame that on wiring down underneath because I don't have any extra wires. Uh, I got our 12 volts hooked up back in our little glove box makeshift deal. And uh, you know, the wiring, it's better, but having this big control box up here is certainly a whole lot nicer than just wires stabbed into the wood framework. So nice thing about it is that you do have a uh, fuse or a light that will come up if the fuse blows. So that's gonna be really nice if something ever does go wrong. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get this cover on here and get this buttoned up. All right, we got our cover up in here. You can see that's all bundled up nice. And uh, you know, this is a pretty cool deal here. Uh, could be nice if there was a little more room for wires, but overall came out really well. Uh, I've still got my mess of wires here. Uh, I've got another ground to hook up and uh, whatnot. So let me get that done. I have not decided if I'm going to redo this whole face. If I do, I'll do that at a later point in time because for now we're just working on uh, focusing on this awesome thing here. So let me tie up this last ground and I'll go ahead and get our stickers put on the front of here. Alrighty, we've got things tidied up for now. I'll take a little bit of uh, wax and grease remover to uh, place over the buttons here, wipe it down, get any wax or grease from my fingers off. Got a good clean surface to start with. All right, so now I've got all my stickers here forget which one is the radio because I haven't plugged it in yet, but I'll figure that out. Anyways, starting off down here, we know is my uh, head and tail lights. I'm just going to find a corresponding sticker. I'm just going to pick the front one because well, to me, headlights imply tail lights. We go ahead and just set it on. Of course, if I had more light over here for myself, that would help. Just want to make sure that it gets on as straight as possible. And then press it on. That was close. But there we go, we've got our front light. You can see once we get our stickers on here, the whole thing isn't illuminated, just the, the cutout area where the light is. So now that I've Got my hands on that, let's wipe it off again. And I didn't find my high mount brake light. I have a feeling that is tied to the rest of the front, and ta front lights and tail lights. So I'll have to fix that. Uh, what's up here? This is my underglow and I actually do have a specific sticker for underglow, right there. So I'm gonna pick him off, set it on. Actually, the downside is all of these were backwards. So the headlight should have been up here and kind of going in order. I think this trimmer ring is on upside down. Um, but if I were to take it off and spin it, then all the indicator lights would be below my, uh, my lights. I guess I'm not really, uh, caring too much if these are backwards, it's all placement anyways. They're all set up to the right fuses. So that's the important part. What else is next? This one here, that's gonna be my bed light. I do have one here for cargo lights too, what do you know? So that is perfect. Let's go ahead and set this on. There we go, cargo lights. Next, this is my strobe lights. That's not hard to see because you can see them flashing there. I don't have a strobe, but I do have roof lights. So I'm going to use roof for the strobe lights. That seems pretty logical to me. Uh, 
I'm going to try and track down what these last couple of circuits go to. Look at the brake light, the radio, and the cigarette lighter and try and track those down here quickly. Alrighty, I did indeed find this one here was the uh, cigarette lighter in the glove box and this here is the radio so we're all set. I went and put a couple of blank outs in our open spots here. Well, there's kind of an Easter egg for locker enable because I don't have a locker. But hey, uh, of course we have, like I said, we have all of our lights on just for fun. Throw our strobes on, there we go. If we want to go ahead and turn everything off, everything is off and we come back, hit on, everything comes back. Ooh, that's high. Everything comes back to the last known position. So that's pretty awesome. Alrighty, so that may be a little more of a detailed unboxing and demo uh, review than I've done just because there was a lot of work on my end to take the old stuff out and put the new stuff in. But long story short, this thing here is a pretty sweet deal. Like I said, it's weatherproof. It's all metal construction, which I think compared to a lot of the other units out there is awesome. Um, the only real concern I had was a metal enclosure around a bunch of, you know, high amperage 12 volt wires, but there's enough clearance in there where it's not a concern. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, the fact that you're able to customize those eight different circuits to whatever you need for your uh, little icons, that's pretty awesome. Um, and just the fact that I could take something that's designed not for this use and make it work. But I think that's gonna wrap it up for right now. If you haven't, hit that subscribe button below, like the video, share it out to your friends. A great example of taking something made for not this exact purpose and making it work. Like I said, made for automobiles, off-road, UTV, whatever the case may be, um, boats, RVs. And I adapted it for our needs here with our old 36 volt Cushman golf cart. I uh, could have put it over on the other uh, gas powered Cushman golf cart, but I really only have two circuits on there right now for the uh, light bar and the, uh, and the pasture sprayer. So for this was an excellent application. I want to thank Larry and the team over at Partsam for sending that out here for us to try and review and hopefully you found it useful. Anyways, we'll see you in the next video. Bye bye. Alrighty, since I know everybody was so worried about safety and getting that high mount brake light work, look at that. Just like it should. I forgot, I only grounded uh, the light itself to the frame, not the, uh, I didn't run a, a negative lead back, so I just found the old one, tapped it in, and now we're good. See you later.